<laughs> mate, welcome back to this savage series of pain that I've inflicted on myself where we're going to go through every single button in Autodesk Inventor and explain what it does, mate. And in this one, we're going to do the shape generator because when you click the shape generator, it opens up a whole array of new buttons which I need to go over, so uh, we're just going to focus on this one in this video. Uh, don't forget, this is not a tutorial. It's not done with the intention that I explain everything as a guide and you follow me along. It's not for that. It is just an explanation of what each button does. And if you want to see more of this series, then do get subscribed with notifications on, and YouTube might tell you when I upload a video. Who knows these days? Who knows? Anyway, right, what we're going to do is look at the shape generator, mate. Shape generator is uh, a new form, a relatively new form of finite element analysis in Inventor, which advises you on where you can remove material from your model based on the forces that are applied to it. So, for example, if you're only applying a moderate amount of force to this model here, then you may not need it to be a full plate. You can maybe remove sections from the middle for weight saving, for material saving, which in turn is cost saving, uh, depending on how it's made, I guess. But uh, that's what it's for. It's to, it's an advisory uh, mechanism to let you know where you can maybe remove material and save costs and save weight in our lap and save the environment and all the fluffy bunnies. And that'll be happy with you. And you've done your... your anyway, right. So we're going to look at the start, which is this button here, Manage create study when you click this it launches the new study dialog box now what they mean by study is a study is a saved configuration of analysis so you can have all of this set up loads constraints forces mesh results that's one study and then you can say i want a new study and it'll give you another node here and you can configure a whole bunch of new materials, constraints, loads, forces, etc. And there's your second study. Your studies can be different. This first study here is shape generator, but your second study could maybe be FEA. And there's the FEA buttons and doodars, which we'll do in another day. So yeah, your studies can be different. Once you've done them, you can either keep them or you can delete them. So that's the, the standard FEA one. We can get rid of that one and stick with the shape generator, mate. So that's uh, creating studies and managing studies. Then we've got this button here, which is material assign. We've applied, we, me, <laughs> you, know, you haven't done it, obviously. I've applied stainless steel to this uh, to this model. So uh, it's going to base the results on the model being made of stainless steel, but you can override that if you want to by clicking the assign material button. It detects that the original material is stainless steel, but then you can override it with something else. So if you want to just do a study and you're like, well, what would it be like if I made it out of something different? different instead of stainless steel what if i made it out of steel alloy or, or copper or something then you'll see the results in a different study you can go into your materials list here and you can you know manage your materials and see what you've got and whatnot but uh yeah you can you can do that here okay constraints right what i'm not going to do is go through every single one of these uh because these are pretty consistent across most simulation packages if you're looking to do some simulation it's a fair bet that you already know what a pressure load is and what a force load is but that's what these all are so fixed constraint for example if your model is going to be fixed up against a, a wall or if it's welded against something you can apply a fixed constraint here and the same for pin and frictionless frictionless i mean pins pretty self-explanatory it goes through the center of a cylindrical face uh, to simulate like radial, axial, tangential directions. Frictionless is when you don't want a face to move normal to itself and it'll stop the model. When the force is applied, it assumes the model can't move on that plane. It can go up and down, but it can't move around on its, uh, on its own plane. So those are your constraints. Then you've got your load. So this is applies the force against or pressure against the model. So if we're going to apply, say, a thousand newtons of force against this region here, this has been created using the split tool, which I looked at in the last video. So I've drew a sketch on here, split the face, and that allows me to apply a force here of, say, 1000 newtons. And then that force is just applied to this circular region rather than being spread out over the entire face of the model. And uh, you can apply your pressure loads as well. And then you've got also bearing loads, moment loads and gravity as well. Gravity is uh, applied against an edge. I don't think I looked at this before and I can't see the axes. I normally apply it against like the Z axis, but I can't see it. Uh, I haven't looked very hard. I don't know if we can change it and apply it against this 
Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You can look. You can apply it against the Z axis. Okie dokie. Right. You just have to change the browser setup here by going to modeling instead of study. All right. So that applies uh, gravity. So because this plank, arr, this plank is hanging off the end of a wall as such, then you've got all the weight of the stainless steel beam sort of gravity is pushing it down. So that will have some kind of impact on the uh, the end result. So uh, gravity is important in this case. And then you've got remote force and body. So these are just different types of for, uh, loads that you can apply against your model and based on what it is that you do. And again, I'm not going to explain what each of them are. It'll take ages. But again, assuming that you're a designer, you should know what loads and forces are going to be applied against your model. So if you don't, it's probably best to not take it from this very quick brief video and go do a bit more detailed research on sites that will explain it a lot better than I can. All right, we've got goals and criteria here. These are really important. These are really, really important for determining the end result of your shape generator analysis like for example preserve region these green areas here are preserved regions you're telling the software when you look at the model and you're looking at ways of removing material wherever you see a green zone keep that intact don't remove any material from that green zone and the way it works is you pick a face like say for example this side face and then you can use these slide bars here to drag that green region around and uh, you can specify it exactly here if you want to so if you wanted 15 millimeters off of the end of the plate or you can type that in there and then you can specify it's, it's like box as well so you can uh, tell it to preserve it based on height width and length as well that's preserve region so in this case what i've done is i've told it to preserve five mil off the end of the, each side of the plate and then where the force has been applied, I've told it to preserve that region around there as well. So when it removes material, it's going to go right the way up to the edge of the plate. And that just, it just preserves the integrity of it being a rectangular steel plate. Right, and we've got symmetry plane, right? This one's really funny. I don't know if it's just me being daft, but when you activate this, you see this happen? And when I first looked at it, I was like, what the, what the hell's going on here? Uh, just to cut a long story short, mate, the whole point of it is when it's removing material, right? So if we uh, if we make that plane red, right? When it's removing material, it's going to try and do it in a symmetrical fashion, which is fine. It's fair enough. You're not going to always want that, but fine, I get it. So if it decides to remove an elliptical shape of material around here, it'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side, providing that it reaches the goals and it's not removing too much. Whereas if you don't have symmetry, it might remove a massive chunk from here, but then nothing from over here, which again might be fine. It depends what you want. It depends what you want the aesthetic to look like at the end. But the weird thing about it is that red means the symmetry planes are active, which took me a while to get my head around because in no other walk of life does red mean go. <laughs> enabled red usually means it's not working so i was like mm, okay anyway but that, that's a thing that's a thing as long as the planes are red that means the symmetry is active so if you want complete symmetry around your model then you can activate these planes and you can also reference a local ucs this is based off of the part origin planes x y and z which they are currently centralized around the middle of the model but in some cases they might not be so you can create your own local ucs to uh, put new x y and z planes at the center of your model click ok and that symmetry is now active okay then we've got shape generator settings this is where you can dictate to the software what kind of targets you want to achieve so currently it's going to try and reduce the original model by 30 percent there may be occasions where it can't achieve the target. So say, for example, we've got a thousand newtons of force being applied here. And if we were to say to it, remove 60%, remo remove 60% of the material, it might not be able to because there just might not be enough force. So you might have to reduce this to say 30%. So it, it's, it's, it's basically like saying, right, we've only got a thousand newtons of force, but I want you to reduce it by 60%. It might not be able to. So that's, uh, that's where you toggle that variable here. Uh, alt alternatively, you can, uh, you can try and go for target mass, which is quite nice that actually that's saying, right, based on the forces, try and achieve a certain weight and then it'll do the, the removal and the, the and the configuration based on a target weight for the component, which is quite nice. That's uh, that's the shape generator settings. Then we've got mesh view. It breaks the part up into mesh elements and that's the, the chunks that it's going to look at. It's going to evaluate the stresses on each of these chunks 
and as it removes material, it's, re it's removing chunks. And you can then use this button here, which is the mesh settings to refine the mesh. In other words, make it smaller. You can see I've got the mesh set to 0 0.015. And basically with this, the smaller the mesh elements, the smaller the chunks are, the more refined the analysis is. But in turn, there's always a downside. The more mesh elements there are, the longer the simulation is going to take. So it's just one of those things where uh, if you're prepared to wait longer for a better more refined result then you can you can do that and then that's pretty much it mate then you click generate shape click run it'll then go through and it'll calculate how much material it can remove uh, but there we go right so that's removed and that's worked quite nicely actually you can see the symmetry there has worked out really really nicely it's preserved the region around here it's preserved the region from the edges and it said right based on this force you can remove these areas here and based on providing that you are just purely applying a thousand newtons of force here, this shape will hold up, which is really good. That's really good, right? What next? What do you do with it, right? Well, this is where things get a little bit funky. What you click, do is click promote shape, and then you promote it into the current part file, and then it overlays this on top of your original model. And I had that. It's like, really? Yeah, it's, yeah. And then you can use traditional sketches <laughs> start drawing the shapes i know you can't project geometry you can't there's nothing you could do with this you've got to sketch this yourself so you could start doing this and uh or, or you can just do a, a rectangle or something i don't know it's up to you how you want to define that shape but it's just giving you sort of something to trace over the top of uh, and that's it all right then mate that'll do it that's the shape generator for autodesk inventor in the next video we'll be looking at work features but that'll do it for this one thank you very much if you found this useful do press the like button because it just helps with the stats you know what i mean uh, i'm not going to tell you to share it because that's just annoying when people do that you'll share it if you've got a mate that will find it interesting and you you know that I, you can't i'm not or share it with your mother well, what's your mother going to do with it do you know what i mean it's just a, anyway yeah <laughs> anyway Thank you very much. Uh, if you find these videos useful, though, uh, do give that little Patreon button a tickle. Thank you very much to everyone who has donated so far on Patreon. You guys are absolute legends. I've just invested in a few, few more bits of equipment for the channel, which is uh, which I'll never see a return on, ever. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But uh, I appreciate everybody who has supported the channel so far. Even the subscribers, man. I need it as I'm embarking on this series. So... Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.